everyone and welcome back to Embroidery Tutorials. We are working on my chain stitch sampler which covers 90 different variations of a chain stitch. We have already covered the original forward and reverse variations of chain stitch itself which you can find in the video I will link up in the corner here. And now we're going to be moving on to some detached chain stitch variations. We are going to be working on circle one of my sampler pattern that I created and which you can find in my Etsy shop. So if you'd like to sew along with us, feel free to go pick that up and let's get started. So we are going to be working from the inside out now that we've done our basic chain stitch around the outside rings. And the very first stitch we're going to do is a two color lazy daisy stitch. So this creates a cute little flower with um, different colored dots on the ends and it's just sort of a fun variation on the original lazy daisy which I will be showing you in a minute. The first thing we're going to do is thread our needle with our secondary color which is going to create the little dots around the outside. Once you've knotted your thread you can go to the ends of these five spokes on that center wheel and you're just going to create tiny little straight stitches on each point of this little star. It just needs to be big enough for another thread to slide underneath it. So we're talking literally like a millimeter or two. After you've created all five little straight stitches, you can tie off that color and re-thread your needle or use a second needle with your main color for the Lazy Daisy stitch. This is going to create the petals. And then we're going to come up in the very center of this star and create our first petal by sliding under one of the little straight stitches that we have created. After that, we're going to go back down in the center and we've created our very first petal. So now you need to create your second petal, but you can't come straight back up in the center because that's where you just went down and you'll just undo your stitch. So in order to resolve that, you wanna actually move slightly inside the first petal that you created, and you're going to come up just within the base of that teardrop. It's best when doing this to always stitch the next petal that's across from the original one. So rather than doing the next petal in the circle, you're going to go opposite of the very first one you created. You're going to slide underneath that straight stitch again and then go back down in the center. And then once again, you're going to come up within the base of that second petal and your third petal is going to be directly across from the second one. So you're always going down in the center and then coming up inside the very end of the last petal you've created, sliding underneath the straight stitch to create the petal opposite of the one you just did, and then back down in the center. And in that way, you create this fun little five petaled flower out of two colors of thread. Next up, we're going to be stitching the original Lazy Daisy stitch. Some people also call this a detached chain stitch because it's just a single chain rather than the nice long connected chain. But it's quite often used for petals of a flower and I think that's where it gets the Lazy Daisy title. So for this, you're doing exactly what you did while creating the first stitch of your forward chain stitch. You're going to come up through your fabric at the end of one of these lines, back down in the exact same location, 
but you're keeping that thread loop on the top of the fabric. And then you're coming back up one stitch length away or at the end of the line that I have created for you. And you're making sure that that thread and needle goes through the loop that you created on top of the fabric. And then you're just gonna tack down the end of that loop with a tiny little straight stitch. You wanna make sure that that stitch doesn't go back through the exact same hole that you came up through, or you could actually pull the end of the loop through the fabric as well, and you're gonna get this kind of weird V shape at the top, and it's gonna turn into like a straight line of a stitch rather than giving you this nice teardrop petal shape. So make sure that there's just a few threads, just a tiny bit of fabric in between where you came up and where you go back down when you're tacking the top of that loop down. And that's it, it is as simple as that. This is one of the easiest stitches out there. It's loads of fun. You can turn it into all different kinds of floral designs and patterns and motifs. So give it a try. And then we are gonna move on to something just a little bit more complicated but not much more complicated, not yet. Next up, we are going to add just a bit of variation to our Lazy Daisy stitch by combining it with a French knot. This makes a nice little petal with a knot at the end. It's just a fun variation. You could use it for anything you want. Again, we're gonna come up through the fabric at the base of our stitch and then back down in the same location, keeping that loop of thread on top of the fabric exactly the same as for a regular Lazy Daisy. We're coming back up through the fabric at the end of our stitch length, going through that loop and tightening it up. But before we tack the end of our loop down, we are going to create a French knot. So to do this, you wanna take your thread and wrap it around the needle twice. You could just do once, you could do three or four times. You can make a French knot as big as you want. I like to do twice to make it sort of proportional to the petal size that we did. Now when you're wrapping your thread around the needle, you wanna make sure that's going over the top of the needle first and then under, rather than under and then over. Once you've wrapped your thread around the needle, you're inserting the needle back into the fabric right at the top of that loop, like you're gonna tack it down. But before you push the needle all the way through, you wanna tighten that knot around your needle. Otherwise you're gonna get a bunch of loops on the top of your fabric. It's not gonna look great. So you're just gonna pull on the tail of your thread and tighten that knot up. And then keeping that thread tight with one hand, you can pull your needle all the way through with the other one and you'll see your knot just tighten up perfectly. And there you go. You've got a fun little petal here with a little French knot on top. There is more than one type of knot though, so of course we have to do another variation on the knotted Lazy Daisy. This one's going to be a Lazy Daisy combined with a colonial knot, which I have a big preference for. I actually like these knots a lot better than French knots. They just don't give me as much trouble. They don't have as much variety in size. Since you're not wrapping the thread around the needle, you can't make it bigger or smaller. But I also find that I don't tend to get any pesky 
extra loops when I do the colonial knots. So again, we're going to prep our petal stitch exactly the same way as we have been before. And when we go to tack down the top of that loop, instead of just doing a straight stitch or a French knot, we're gonna create a V with our thread by sliding the needle through the center. And then we're wrapping the end of the thread around the end of the needle. This is creating the knot on the needle itself. Then once your needle goes into the fabric, you can again pull your thread to tighten that knot up right on the end of the needle, and then pull your needle all the way through. I'm gonna show this to you multiple more times because the wrap on the needle can look a little complicated and weird at first, but once you try it a couple times on your own, you'll find it's actually really easy and it tightens up really nicely and creates a really nice little knot there. So again, to create that knot, we are making a V out of our thread, then taking the tail of our thread, the part that's hanging off there, and wrapping it around the end of the needle, over and then under. So you're kind of wrapping this thread back around itself, and that's how you're creating a knot. Of course, we are hitting on every variation of chain stitch, and specifically at this point, Lazy Daisy. So we're gonna do a long tail Lazy Daisy. This barely needs any explanation. You're going to make the exact same prep stitch that we have been doing this whole time for all Lazy Daisies. But when you go to tack down the end of that stitch, instead of doing a tiny little stitch that disappears on the top of the loop, you're gonna do a nice long stitch that is clearly visible. Um, I have seen the long-tailed Lazy Daisy used for a variety of different flower types. It's a fun look, it gives you some options, and it's super easy to stitch. Our last Lazy Daisy variation that we are going to talk about today is the Lazy Daisy combined with a pistol stitch. Again, we are creating that exact same Lazy Daisy prep, going down through the fabric in the same place we came up, and then coming back up in the middle of our loop. This time, instead of going straight back down in a long stitch, we're gonna create a long stitch with a knot at the end, which if you don't know from other tutorials, it's called a pistol stitch. So we are doing the exact same thing that we did for the French knot, wrapping the thread around the needle anywhere from one to three times. I prefer to just do twice. But now instead of going down right back at the top of that loop, we're going down a stitch length away. We're creating that long tail 
on the Lazy Daisy stitch. Once you get the needle halfway through the fabric, you want to tighten up that knot around the base of the needle or you're going to get a lot of extra loops and a lot of extra thread on the top and it's not going to look great. So make sure that you get the needle halfway into the fabric, tighten up that knot, and then keep it tight as you pull the thread and the needle all the way through the fabric. And then you have this lovely little petal with a pistol stitch on the end of it to tack it down. All right, you guys, so those are six variations on the Lazy Daisy or Detached Chain Stitch. I hope you have enjoyed those. These are all pretty easy stitches. They barely warrant actual instructions because they're so easy to do, but we are definitely going to be stepping it up as we move through this sampler. We're gonna be hitting on some much more complicated stitches that I really had a blast learning and I hope you guys will as well. For now, I hope that these stitches give you something new to practice and something to expand your basis when you're sewing your own designs. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.